In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to use StatCrunch to generate the descriptive statistics for a given data set. Now, in my math lab, you're going to be doing homework problems where you're going to be given raw data and be asked to calculate descriptive statistics. Now, in this case, I'm looking at a problem from a fellow student's homework assignment from section 3.3, Measures of Variation. We're using software to generate the descriptive statistics. It's going to be important because uh, some of the calculations for like standard deviation are real tedious. In this case, we're dealing with seven pieces of data, which isn't a lot, but it's still, I mean, you're dealing with digits that are in the hundreds. So you're going to be dealing with some real tedious calculations unless you use software, like maybe a TI-83 or Excel or StatCrunch. Now you can see this student got the answer for the sample variance wrong, but then did get the correct answer for the sample standard deviation. Let me walk you through how to use StatCrunch to calculate the variance and other descriptive statistics for that matter. For this problem, you'll notice for these seven pieces of data, there's an icon to the right. And if you hover over it, you can see the pop-up appears that says click to copy table. Let's go ahead and click on that icon and it'll give you some options. Now, you could copy the data to clipboard, open up Excel, and then paste the data into Excel and generate all the descriptive statistics that way. But let's go ahead and click on StatCrunch. If I click this first option, open in StatCrunch, a window will open up with the StatCrunch software pre-filled with the data you know, from the problem. At this point, we can generate descriptive statistics using StatCrunch. And StatCrunch is a lightweight statistical analysis software, um, really just dedicated to statistical analysis. It's very similar to what you can get you know, commercially or even on the internet. So at this point, you'll see that in the first column labeled variable one, we have all the data from that problem. I want you to note that you could click on any other column and you could start inputting your own data. So if you're working on a quiz problem or maybe an exam problem, or you're just interested in doing your own analysis, you could input your own data here just you know, by typing it in, 78, 88, you know, 80, you know whatever. But here, I'm really just interested in the first column. So I'm going to click on stat and you'll notice that a menu opens up. I'm going to be interested in the summary stats. So if I hover over summary stats, notice a sub menu opens up and specifically I'm interested in data arranged in columns. Now a lot of these other features that you may see here you don't know a lot about because we haven't covered it yet, but believe it or not, many of the options that are listed here will be covered, you know, in our class. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to hover over summary stats followed by columns and it opens up another window. Now notice any column that has data in it will be listed here. And I'm really just interested in the data in the first column for variable one. So I can select it. If I were also interested in generating the summary stats for the other columns, I could control, so I could select control on my keyboard and hold it, and also click on variable three, in which case it will also generate the summary stats for variable three. I'm going to click on variable one again because that's all I'm interested in. I'm going to leave where blank. I'm going to leave group by blank as well. But now, notice for this option field here, it looks like the upper quartile is the only thing selected, but this feature is actually the middle of the options. If I click this up arrow, you can see everything that's been selected. The size of the sample, the mean of the sample, the mean variance, the mean standard deviation, the mean standard error, which please do not get that confused with standard deviation. The standard error is a little bit different, but we're going to be interested in that standard deviation. The mean the median, the range has also been selected, and also the remaining parts of the five number summary, the minimum, maximum, lower quartile, upper quartile. If you continue to scroll down, there are some features here that are not selected. You could go ahead and select them if you want by selecting control on your keyboard 
and holding it and then clicking the remaining items. Now, a lot of these other items that I'm selecting here, we're not really interested in, at, at all in this class, but the IQR, we definitely are. The skewness, maybe as well. And then I'm going to leave percentiles empty and other statistics empty as well. And then at the very bottom, the compute button. And I'm going to go ahead and click the compute button. When you do that, you get this table that summarizes the descriptive statistics. Notice seven data values, the mean of those values, the variance of those values, the standard deviation, the median, the range, the minimum value, the maximum value, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, the sum, the IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1, they've already calculated that for you, as well as some of those other values we might be interested in, like the skewness or the IQR, as I said before. But now that you have these summary statistics, these sample statistics, now you can go back to your homework and finish up the problem. Notice, what's the sample variance? Well, if we go back to StatCrunch, the sample variance is 0 0.04042381. Now, rounded to the nearest thousandth, it would be 0 0.040, which is if I go back to that homework problem now, yeah, 0 0.040, that's the correct answer. Now, I could take that sample variance and take the square root of it to find the sample standard deviation, but notice that sample standard deviation has also been calculated here. 0 0.0, uh, I mean 0 0.201 if you rounded it to three decimal points. Now, 0 0.201 is the correct answer. Notice this person input 0.2 and still got it right. Well, that's because my you know, my math lab will allow for a certain amount of error. So in this case, the correct answer is 0 0.201, but my math lab will accelerate, will accept anything between 0 0.200 and 0 0.201. So if you're off by a little bit, it's okay. Now notice this last answer, which is something I want to point out. For a lot of the problems where they ask you to compute a lot of values, Usually, the last problem will be one of these thinking problems where they're really testing you on how well you understand the concept of what they're asking. What would be the values of the measures of variation of the tuna sushi contained on mercury? Well, that's what all of these values represent. They represent the amount of mercury in parts per million in tuna sushi. But if all of these values were zero, meaning the tuna sushi contained on mercury, if all of these values were zero, well, then the standard deviation would be zero. There'd be no variability in the data because all the values would be the same. So that's why part B would be the correct answer here. Now, that's StatCrunch accessed through my math lab. And I can close this. And, you know, I could use this worksheet now to input my own data values if I wanted to, which is an important thing to note because with StatCrunch, you can use StatCrunch on the quizzes and examinations. Like the third quiz is going to be an overall quiz asking you to generate descriptive statistics. Well, if you have StatCrunch open, you could input the data values that I give you and generate the descriptive statistics that way. I mean, here, look, I, I don't know what these values are. I'm just making them up. But if I input a column of data here, then I can go to Stat, Summary Stats, Arranged by Columns, and I can select that column and generate the descriptive statistics that way. And notice I get them. And then I can use these to help answer questions. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a StatCrunch link within Blackboard. Um, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put it within Blackboard, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, next to the exams and quizzes. So within the quizzes content folder, what I'm thinking about doing is actually putting an item here that represents a link to StatCrunch. So be on the lookout for that because if you get accustomed to using StatCrunch, it will save you so much time and sanity later on.